And now we're very pleased to have with us, uh, as the guest of the noon briefing today, Radhika Kumar Swami, the Special Representative of the Secretary General for Children in Armed Conflict, and she's going to brief you uh, on uh, the presentation of her annual report uh, to the General Assembly that's uh, forthcoming. Th thanks very much. Thank you very much, and uh, as you know, this afternoon I will present uh, my report uh, to the General Assembly. Um, uh, the report, um, as you know, uh, as well as my statement this afternoon, will uh, welcome uh, the General Assembly's and Security Council engagement on issues relating to human rights and protection of women and children. I think it will acknowledge that there is now a special momentum on especially sexual violence. Uh, and uh, we have to welcome uh, resolution, Security Council Resolution 1882, as you know, which uh, makes uh, sexual violence as well as killing and maiming of children, contrary to international law, a trigger to be included in the list of shame of the Secretary General with regard to parties that commit grave violations against children. We also have to welcome the Resolution 1888, setting up a special representative on sexual violence. And we hope that between uh, these two resolutions, uh, we can at least uh, uh, begin a process of trying to deal with the issue of sexual violence um, in conflict. I also want to highlight, which I will highlight in my report um, today to the um, uh, General Assembly, that we're not only talking about girls, so they are the largest uh, victims. There are also issues about sexual violence against boys, and in particular, the institution of Bachabazi in uh, certain parts of Central and South Asia, which we need to combat uh, sexual violence against boys used as, uh, um, uh, used in, uh, for sexual as slaves, as well as in situations where they are um, also made into dancing um, boys, etc. So uh, just an issue that I would like to highlight when we're talking about sexual violence. Uh, the second uh, area, of course, besides sexual violence that 1882 looks at is the issue of killing and maiming contrary to international law. As you know now, we have a mandate to list parties that kill and maim children contrary to international law. Um, in this regard, we have called for protection of civilians to be an essential part of military planning uh, and also that international actions on arms transfer, cluster munitions and landmines uh, be um, accelerated. Um, so we will, from the next year's report to the Secretary General's report to the Security Council, will list parties that also kill and maim with impunity. With regard to the recruitment and use of children as child soldiers, I want to report certain successes we have had uh, with regard to uh, the Philippines. As you know, the MILF has entered into an action plan and is in the process of releasing children uh, in its midst. In Uganda, the UPDF has entered into an action plan and children are being uh, released. In Sri Lanka, the TMVP has entered into an action plan and a large percentage have been released. We have similar successes in Burundi and Central African Republic. Um, these are all groups that have entered into action plans with the United Nations for um, a structured release of children. Of course, there are still many other groups. Uh, there are, as you know, uh, we have uh, 19 persistent violators, but still at least this is a beginning. Um, we are hoping that action will be taken against these persistent violators, and one thing 1882 uh, resolution does is set up a communications procedure at least with the existing sanctions committees. Uh, and we are already moving forward on the DRC, that parties that recruit and use children uh, will begin to have sanctions against them, at least where there are existing sanctions committees. We're also concerned uh, with the issue of children and justice. As you know, uh, the position of the United Nations is that children should not be prosecuted for war crimes. Uh, we have been in discussions with the United, Nation, United States government about, uh, about uh, individuals in, the, uh, in Guantanamo. Uh, so we were happy when Mohammed Jawad was released, and we look forward to Omar Khadr, uh, who was also uh, a child, when he committed his act to be released uh, from Guantanamo as well. I also want to know that, uh, announce to you that our office will begin a campaign uh, to for universal ratification 
uh, of the optional protocol on the recruitment and use of child soldiers to the convention. As you know, there are 130 states that have actually signed and ratified this protocol. Uh, so we have about 36 that haven't signed at all, and we're hoping to begin a campaign with those uh, 36. Uh, and uh, it will begin, the campaign will begin in February, uh, and we hope it will, uh, which is the eighth anniversary of the entry of force of the uh, optional protocol. Um, and uh, we hope that by the 10th anniversary, we will have universal um, ratification. I also want to say that in my report, I have included uh, the uh, 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 annex on the rights and guarantees of IDP children. This is becoming an increasing issue around the world, the issues of non-discrimination, uh, non uh, the, the fact that IDP children should be given basic services and have their civic rights, uh, as, and also the right to education. We felt that it was time to list these rights and we have done that in the Rights and Guarantees, which has been attached to the General Assembly, and we are hoping it will be picked up uh, by member states uh, in the process of their deliberations. Uh, finally, let me say that this is the year that the United Nations, uh, at least General Assembly, is speaking about child participation as an important part of its um, uh, discussion on children. Uh, we uh, welcome the General Comment 12 of the Committee on the Rights of the Child on Child part, uh, Participation. We also, when having been around the world, especially in post-conflict situations, we have seen where child participation is often forced by political parties and groups. We want children to participate. We want that uh, participation to be free, voluntary, and in the best interest of the child. And in that regard, we will welcome a platform of action that moves towards raising awareness about child participation, creating mechanisms for their participation, and also setting up complaint procedures, especially, um, as you know, the Convention on the Rights of the Child there is moved now to set up a complaint procedure for that convention. We fully endorse that and hope that will be, uh, uh, the process begins in December, and we hope that will uh, conclude.